I can hear the whisper of the rubber flowing through the air. 502, 503, 504. I'm counting. I'm counting the bells I'm receiving. My body no longer feel pain. My body used to pain. I can hear how he's laughing when he hear me screaming of getting hurt. I can feel how much he, he is enjoying touching me and hurting people there. I can't understand why he is enjoying that. Trying to figure it out, but I can't. One day, the guard came and took me to the, what we used to call the torture floor and brought me in the corner and started hitting me with the pelts. And a weak, weak voice come from somewhere in the room. Someone was whispering. We were not allowed to talk. It was always only allowed to whisper. Someone was whispering with 502, 503, 504. And after that, I just lost the number because the belt was coming to my back and I was getting hurt. When the torture hours finished, they took us back to the room, our room, our square, 40 centimeter square. And they brought me next to the person who was whispering when we were on the torture floor. And I whispered and asked him, are you counting? And he answered with a big smile on his face, yes. Why? Why are you counting? Why? I can't understand. And he said, yes, I'm counting. I'm collecting my rewards for my afterlife, my paradise. I can't understand. Afterlife, life, paradise, I only can imagine the death. The day after, I want to try to count, to collect. So when the first pelt came, one, two, three, and I could not continue, it was impossible, you know, it hurts so much. And uh, like try to find the next number four, but I, it's not anywhere there, it's so difficult, I can't continue. And start to feel so, I'm so weak, this person was counting like a very high number and can't do it. So I try again, say, Umar, try, 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 but I could not. The day after, could count to five, six, seven. The day after, 30, 40, 50. And after two months, I could do it and count 502, 503, 504. And one time, when the guards were torching me, I was counting the belts, and the guards was counting at the same time. So he said, 67. 69, and I just looked like it, he missed something, so I whispered, 68. <laughs> Everyone in the room got silent. Everything got silent. No one's talking. No God's hitting anyone anymore. 
just sign. And the God's like looking at me like that, opening the eyes like that. Are you not in pain? Are you not in pain? And I can't, absolutely, I can't answer. I can't. Then he shouted and said, put this thing in the other cell. They put me in a cell for four days without torture, with food and water in more than 40 centimeters square. And after four days of having amazing life without torture, like can you imagine, like have been tortured for like many months, then you sit for four days without torture, it was amazing. After four days, they took me to the same floor, and the belts started. And I counted one, two, three, but it was like the first belt I get in my life. It was so difficult, impossible to continue. So the God continued, I missed the belts. So I try again, Omar, yeah, you, you should count, you should Think about your friend who was counting the last time. So I tried again, one, two, then I lose the number, one, two, three, four, then again, then one, four, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, hundred, two hundred, three hundred, five, and the smile just get bigger. I was thinking, I had a faith that I'm gonna get rewards for everything I'm going through. And it helps me so much. So whenever you feel your pain is too strong, pain of losing something, someone, or maybe losing yourself, find a reason. Find a reason to use to channel your pain to words. Find something to convert your pain to make you stronger. Now I used to hunger. One year in prison, two years in prison, I used to hunger. And in time of need, I was thinking about my food. Should I eat all my food or should I give a bit of it away to someone else? Made some of, some of you is wondering why he should give his food away to someone else in time of hunger. Well, I wanted to invest. I started investing my investment in future and in other humans. So when I get my food, I could take a bit of my food to give it to some, someone else, the day after for someone else, the day after for someone else. And in exchange, these people should pay me back after two months. So I invested in two months. And the final day came. After two months, people started to pay back. One day, at the same day, people just paying back, start to collect food. It was like, can you imagine, a lot of food, so much. It was like this, but I could see it, so much food. I was so hungry. I was so happy of having, like, collecting wealth. Can you imagine if you got $100 million dollars now, what are you going to do or dream in tonight? I collected my wealth and put it next to me. I could, I could not eat it directly. I was so happy. To, I won't see it, like to see it all, for always, just see it. So I was sitting like that in my square and my foot next to me. Look at that. Then I started dreaming. I got so amazing dreams. 
I'm gonna give a bit for my friends who helped me when I came to prison. I'm gonna eat like, uh, like whole bread. I'm gonna invest. I'm gonna invest again. The happiness of like getting good results was amazing. And in the best, in the middle of the best dream in my life, someone knocked my shoulder. And I absolutely, I don't want to answer anyone. I'm happy. And this person continued knocking my shoulder and said, what? Remember, we were not able to talk. Not allowed to talk, only allowed to whisper. What? Omar, I'm sorry. Omar, I've never seen so much food before. It's the first time I could not, I could not pay myself, so I ate it. I could not find anything, like everything, my wealth, my dreams, my life, my, my smile, my everything was gone. The person who helped me when the first time I came in prison, my best friend, stole my food, and I want him to die. I want him to die. The day after, the gods came and shouted, said, but one of you in the middle of the room, which means they are going to kill this person in the middle of the room. And if no one is in the middle of the room, they may kill may, maybe 30, 40 of us. All of us in the row was facing the wall, like that, as we used to do when the gods is in. And no one want to die. No one want to die. When the gods come closer, open the door, I could hear some movement. Someone was going back to the middle of the room. The guards opened the door, started torching one of us. I don't know who, but one of us. And I could hear the, like, he's breathing with that death. <gasps> I couldn't breathe anymore. And until, into the death. The guards get out, we turn back, looked. It was my best friend who stole my food. It was Yusuf. Other, another prisoner come next to me and whispered, Omar, Yusuf sacrificed himself for you. He wanted you to eat his food today because he stole your food yesterday. He sacrificed himself for you. Which means my investment, the bread, everything I collected there, saved the life of 34 persons, prisoners. Because if no one get back, we all gonna get caught. So it was, we lost one of us, Yusuf, but we saved the life of 34. So it's a good result of investment. After three years, my mother paid. I was 34 kilos. 
sick and had TBC, can't go, I ended up in an insulation room in Turkey, not allowed to meet anyone. One day, someone knocked the door, I opened. It was my younger brother, my 10 years old brother, Ali. He said, Omar, get dressed. We are going to Europe. 10 years old. Europe. I can't understand, but I got dressed. I, I can't think about anything. I just need to do that. Got dressed, start following my younger brother who was the leader. And we could, with that, come to the whole way. He could communicate with the smugglers and come. And we ended up in Sweden, in Stockholm, with a lot of people taking care of me. It was amazing. My young brother did what was needed. My young brother tried to make me warm and was sleeping under the star. My young brother saved my life. So, never underestimate the younger generation. Their ability to adopt to the situation can, make, can mean the difference between life and death. Never look down at them. They can be the solution for your problem. Five months ago, I got a call. And it was a Syrian number. So I was happy. I love my country. I answered, said hi. I get an answer. When the answer came, I could remember the blood and everyone died in prison and when they tortured me and when my cousin died between my arms when I was taking him to the toilet and the death and every bad memories came up and were the guards calling me and saying, why you don't shut up? I shut up if you tell me why you was enjoying killing people, hurting people there. And the answer was like that. <clears throat> He could not answer, and it was enough for me. I was forced to be quiet back in prison because of him. Today, I, make, I am the one who makes him speechless. I am Syrian. My name is Omar, and it's my story. <laughs>